Very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Vogan European Outlook. A lot going on at the moment and there is a lot on the channel as well. Um, be sure to check out uh, the Tropical Update which has literally just been put on the channel just now. Looking at Lee, the specifics, the forecast, the impact potentially on the New England area as well as uh, the Canadian Maritimes also. And uh, in tomorrow's video, we will look at the first winter 2023-24 update number one. And guess what's happening over the next wee while? We are seeing the development of the old polar vortex. So yeah, we're back to polar vortex season as we play through the GFS loop here. This is a 10 uh, HPA temperatures and heights and you can see the cold colors developing regrouping there's that area of low pressure um you know over the pool this is representative of a lack of daylight and of course increased cold over the polar um the polar stratospheric region here so interesting times to come and stay tuned here on marvelandweather.com if you're interested in all things winter weather. And like I said, I have promised that we will look tomorrow at uh, such things as the El Nino, the details with regards to an east versus central based El Nino, the Indian Ocean Dipole, of course, being a positive, what implications that may have, the quasi biennial oscillation, the QBO, that is an easterly phase, That what impacts may that have on the upcoming winter season, the solar cycle, the Atlantic sea surface temperature profile, the past summer, the type of pattern we've had, and also the autumn season as well. All these things plus more we will discuss here on marvoganweather.com and also look at some of the model data with long range as well. Polar vortex, is it going to be stronger? Is it going to be weaker? Uh, what is the models indicating for the December through February period? There are so many things to cover. Be sure to subscribe to marvelandweather.com if you haven't already done so. The tropics are alive and kicking, and that may have significant impacts, not just uh, on the next week to 10 days, but even further down the road. Now, a good example of that was last winter, where we seen a cold December. And I do believe, and this is all based on a theory from Joe Bastardi, the late season tropical activity, the type of hurricane track strength the warmer than average sea surface temperatures did that lead to a possible um you know high latitude blocking during the early portion of the winter season i believe it was we also have to factor in things like the manjulian oscillation but there is interesting things going on at the moment we've seen of course like i've already said before the most negative nao summer since 2009 we know of course what followed that summer um, and of course, we've got Lee that's moving north. We've got Margot that's expected to move north as well. And we may even have a bit of a blow as we push towards next week with regards to Hurricane Margot. Currently, uh, 970 millibars and 90 mile per hour category one hurricane moving in a north northwest direction at seven miles per hour. Be sure to check out the tropical update, by the way, if you're interested in the tropics because there is a lot on Hurricane Lee and what implications that may have. So, of course, we are going to see both systems moving into relatively colder waters as we push through the next few days. But what impact does that have on our pattern? This is off the GFS, by the way, you can see here. There's Lee, there's Margo. We've got, of course, a, a trough moving east over North America here. What influences that may have on Lee as it moves north? And also what influences may the Azores High have on Margo? Now, of course, looking at it at face value, how does this system get to the UK? Well, we'll have a look at that in just a second here. We'll play through the overview chart. You know, high pressure kind of builds over the North Atlantic to the north of Margo. And you see here, there's a system that is uh, moving up into the British Isles here. As you can see here, a spell of fairly heavy rainfall through Ireland, Northern Ireland, and into the central swathe of the British Isles, uh, as you can see here, into early tomorrow morning, and then there's an area of low pressure that passes just to the north, not tomorrow morning, Friday morning, I beg your pardon here, 
But watch this space here. While we forget, uh, in a sense, ignore the UK and Ireland at the moment, we want to look at the evolution of the pattern. A very complex and very likely changeable scenario. But notice here that there's an area of high pressure, a pretty strong area of high pressure at that, to the north of the Azores, to the north, northeast of Margo. We've got an, a fairly deep area of low pressure to the south of Greenland here at the moment. Bear in mind, we've got a... a a trough that's moving eastwards over eastern North America. That essentially is uh, kind of slightly building heights uh, on the very far uh, west southwest flank of that high to the north northeast of Margo. What that's doing is the influence of the exit and trough over eastern North America, the rebuilding of heights to the north northeast of Lee is essentially what's allowing that slight northwest turn of the track of Lee. And that may mean that this likely you know, 500 mile wide system is going to have significant impacts anywhere from the eastern portions of uh, New England. So Cape, Cape Cod, for example, up the east coast of Maine. We could have a landfall on the upper Maine coast here. And uh, of course, this will be you know, a borderline tropical versus extra tropical by the time it reaches Maine. Of course, we're in colder waters. We're in a colder environment. We're in a more sheared environment as well. But one thing is worth noting here. As Lee, now this is at 6 o'clock on Saturday morning. Lee's essentially centered just to the east of, uh, of Long Island, Cape Cod. It's making a beeline for that far east coast of Maine, western fringes of uh, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. But it's the system itself, the influence of that, the fact that we've got this area of high pressure shifting slightly to the east, we've got the associated frontal system attached to that low just off the southeast coast of Greenland. And it's this door that becomes open to Margo running around the side of that high. Notice how this high becomes a little deflated. Then we see the high kind of slipping to the southeast. And then, of course, Dursley taking that eastward turn also got Margo that is now running around the top of that high and watch this space Lee and Margo looks as if according to the latest run of the GFS is very close together do they try to merge somehow looks as if Margo makes a beeline for the UK and Ireland as a 959 millibar area of low pressure just off the south coast of Ireland here this could be a significant wind maker and storm for the UK and indeed Ireland towards the end of next week here. So we need to pay close attention to this. By the way, there's Nigel on the playing field over the Western Atlantic. What influences may all this have on our atmosphere? At this moment in time, I think it's possible that we have a much deeper trough over the Northeast Atlantic, over the Northwest of Europe, as we press through the final 10 days of the month here. So we'll watch this space. I may be completely wrong about that, but we're driving a lot of tropical heat northwards towards the mid-Atlantic, towards the mid-latitude pattern. And are we going to start to see the NAO, the AO becoming more and more negative here? Could all this um, warmth lifting north translate to building high pressure over the high latitude region of the planet here? That is going to be the thing that we need to keep an eye on but i'm getting a little bit more optimistic it's a long way off folks but i did actually allude to this last week the possibility of some sort of a windstorm towards the end of this month based on the tropical activity that we're seeing at the moment here so there are so many things to cover so many things to look at and i certainly will try my best to keep you posted as best I can here. So it's a very, very interesting, very active time from a meteorological point of view, very complex situation. Of course, we've got a lot of warm waters stacked up across the North Atlantic surrounding the UK. What influences may this have? Even though these tropical systems lose the warm water as they lift north, of course, they engage with the jet stream, stronger winds aloft. That, of course, is not conducive for tropical systems. But as these systems transfer heat out of the tropics towards the temperate region, does that unusually warm water over the North Atlantic, in conjunction with the atmosphere, help 
deepen and re-deepen these systems. So their deep, of course, is a tropical entity to then undergo cold core transition. And then, of course, the dynamics completely change. We'll remove the fuel from the ocean and it's more powered by the clash of warm and cold air masses and whatnot. But do we have that added boost of that warm water surrounding the UK over and underneath these systems? That all remains open to question. Very interesting times to come. And I will certainly try to keep you posted as best I can. Have you subscribed to marathonweather.com? If you haven't, you're already interested in meteorology, be sure to hit that big red button. I greatly would appreciate that. Check out the tropics. And indeed, tomorrow we'll look at winter. Stay tuned. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye for now.